All right, let's take a look at exercise three. Uh, so this is actually problem 11.5 from the course textbook. Uh, so our next Reynolds Law uh, example. So remember, this is chapter 11. So we're looking at cases where uh, Reynolds Law applies. So we have a tank that contains a mixture of normal heptane and normal octane. Um, the composition of the mixture is unknown, but the tank label states that the bubble temperature of the mixture at one bar is 103 degrees C. All right, so I have a mixture of heptane C7 and octane C8. So assuming that that uh, forms an ideal solution seems like a fantastic all right, assumption. All right, I have a mixture of linear alkanes. What's the composition of the mixture and what is the dew temperature at one bar? The saturation pressure of the two components is given by the Antoine equation below, where P sats in millimeters of mercury, T is in Kelvin, and the parameters are provided below. Okay. Well, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is draw a picture of a relevant phase diagram. Okay. So here now I'm thinking, do I want to draw a PXY or a TXY? Uh, well, I'm thinking a TXY since initially we're asked for the bubble uh, temperature of the mixture at one bar, or we're told the bubble temperature at one bar is 103 degrees C, and then in B we're going to be asked for the, the dew temperature. Okay, so let me draw the TXY. Okay, and so C7, all right, heptane will take to be our most volatile component. Okay, so if I'm drawing the TXY. I look at my pure component limits. My most volatile component is going to boil most easily. So it's going to have the smaller pure component saturation temperature. So this would be T2 sat up here. Okay. And again, I don't care how well you can draw. Okay. I'm going to sketch All right, my phase diagram is something like that, which Looks awful, <laughs> but uh, but hopefully it's good enough to uh, uh, to get the point across in the problem. Okay, so T one sat right. You could calculate. So basically, you know, looking at A and B, both these are at a pressure of one bars. Right. So in a TXY, my pressure should be constant and equal to one bar. Okay. I know low temperatures now are going to form favor liquid. High temperatures favor vapor. Okay, so this is my dew line. Here's my bubble line. Okay, T1 sat and T2 sat um, I could solve given the provided Antoine equation. So if I look at the case one P1 sat um, is equal to one bar, you know you could solve for the corresponding temperature. Just need to keep track of units and then do the same thing for uh, T2 sat. So I'd plug in uh, pressure of one bar and solve for the, the corresponding T. Okay. All right, so we're told, okay, we have an unknown uh, mixture composition. Okay, so, but I'm gonna draw on a line of constant composition. So I don't know what the composition of my mixture is. Okay, what I know, okay, and this is where my, my picture is gonna be pretty Pretty awful. So let me move my line of constant composition over so it's not as relevant. So why I say it's awful is if I were at my this bubble point and I draw my isotherm over, I'm still hitting my bubble line. Okay. So if I draw a line of constant composition, okay, at my bubble point, okay, which I'm gonna try and sketch is here, right? Read off liquid compositions from my uh, bubble line vapor compositions from my dew line. Okay, so here's Y1, here's X1, and then what's unique about my bubble line is that X1 is just equal to Z1, right? The composition of my mixture. Okay, so if we're given the temperature and pressure, um, you know, so for a pressure of one bar, we're given the temperature of our um, bubble point, um, then we could find the relevant composition. 
okay? Uh, so how I would do that is a bubble P calculation, just like we just looked at in problem one. So at my bubble line, I have a system at two-phase coexistence. So Rayleigh's law should definitely be applicable here. So my isofugacity equation will take the form of Y1P is equal to X1, P1 sat, Y2P is equal to X2, P2 sat. Okay, cool. Okay, so now when I look at this problem, all right, let's look at um, um, what we what we know, all right, or what we don't know. All right. So we're told, so we don't know the composition, okay? So in this case, we don't know x1, okay? x one's unknown, and so x2 is unknown, okay? But the bubble point temperature, the mixture is 103 degrees C, okay? So I know P1 sat, I know P2 sat, right? Because since I know the temperature is 103 degrees C, I could readily uh, plug that into my Antoine equation, and I could calculate P1 sat and P2 sat. Right, so knowing temperature is one and the same as knowing P1 sat and P2 sat. Okay, um, I know the pressure. Okay, the pressure is uh, 103 degrees C, so I know that. Okay, um, and I also don't know Y1. Okay, I don't know the composition of my mixture. Okay, but we're going to do the same trick as we did in our bubble P calculation before, um, and we're going to take our two isofugacity equations and add them together. Okay, so that I get Y1P plus Y2P. Okay, and that's going to be equal to P times Y1 plus Y2, which is equal to P. All right, so I add the two equations together so I can kill Y. I'm getting rid of Y because I don't know Y, so that's going to leave me with my single unknown of interest, X. All right, so when I add them together, I get P is equal to X1, one, P1 sat. Ah, plus x2 p2 sat, okay, where I could plug in x2 is 1 minus x1, okay. So this is p bubs, p bubs, all right. So p bubs, so p is equal to 1 bar, okay. So p is 1 bar, p1 set and p2 sat, okay. I know the temperature at my bubble point is 103 degrees C. So I can plug that into my Antoine equation and get P1 sat and P2 sat. So the only unknown in this equation is X1 and X2. And hence, since X2 is equal to 1 minus X1, right, the only unknown is, is X1. So I can readily use that to solve for X1. And by bubble point, X1 is just equal to Z1, all right, which would give me the composition of my mixture. Okay, so I just do a bubble P calculation and solve for, for X. Okay. B. Okay. B is going to be similar. What's the dew temperature at one bar? Okay. So, um, you know, this is where um, yeah, my, my diagram definitely isn't the best. All right. So, if I take this mixture of composition Z1, okay, okay, at my dew point, okay, I would have this y1 in equilibrium with this x1, okay? But what's unique about my dew point is that at the dew point, y1 is equal to z1, okay? So if I write my isofugacity equation down, right? Because again, I have a system of two-phase coexistence. I have y1p is equal to x1 p1 sat. y2p is equal to x2 P2 sat, okay. Uh, we're here. Uh, let's see. You know y1 because y1. Well, uh, yeah, y1 is equal to z1, okay. And so, let me just make this an a. All right, we're going to solve for z1, right? Because z1 is just going to be equal to x1, right? All right. From our bubble point calculation, we solve for um, x1, which of course bond to z1, the composition of our mixture. Okay, so from A, I know Z1, okay? And knowing the composition of my mixture, that would correspond to knowing, in this case, uh, Y1 and Y2. Okay, what else are we given? Uh, what's the dew temperature at one bar? Okay, so we know our pressure, all right? Because we're at one bars, okay? 
Now, I don't know X1 and X2. I don't know the composition of my liquid. Okay? And I also don't know P1 sat and P2 sat. Okay? So at first, you know, again, just thinking X2 is 1 minus X1. Okay? It might look like I have two equations with three unknowns, X1, P1 sat, and P2 sat. Okay? But that's not the case because P1 sat and P2 sat are only a function of temperature. Okay? So once I know T, then I know P1 and sat and P2 sat. So these aren't two um, you know, independent variables I need to solve for. All I need to solve for is T, and I have both of them. So essentially I have a system of two equations with two unknowns. Okay? My two unknowns would be X and T. So in theory I could just you know, solve this equation uh, systematically. Uh, and life would be good, all right? Uh, if I wanted to, I could do you know, what's called a do-p calculation, where the goal of a do-p calculation is just like when we do a bubble-p calculation, goal is to get rid of y, and a do-p calculation, the goal is to get rid of x, okay? So before we can get rid of x, all right, we need to rewrite this as, we're gonna bring p1 set over here. So I'll write this as, say, y1, uh, p over, actually, let's write it as, P, P times Y1 over P1 sat is equal to, somehow I erased X1. Crazy man. Ah, it's this erase button on the stylus. X1, okay, is equal to X1. Uh, P times Y2 over P2 sat be equal to X2. So if I add them together, right, the trick is x1 plus x2 is just equal to 1. So I end up with p times y1 over p1 sat uh, plus y2 over p2 sat is equal to 1. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily help me out too much, right, but y1 is equal to z1, y2 would be 1 minus z1, okay, and op. Um, so this leaves me then the only unknown in this equation is t. Okay, uh, would I try and solve for this uh, new, uh, analytically? No. Would I try and solve for it uh, numerically? Yeah. And you can use uh, you know MATLAB or uh, Excel. You know, the choice would be up to you. All right. But it'd be a matter of finding the temperature uh, for which this equation evaluates to one. Okay. Cool. So it's just uh, solving for t so that, that equation is satisfied. All right, and that's that's B. All right, so this one I'd probably definitely um, take on uh, using MATLAB. Uh, just be sure to keep track of your units of pressure. Uh, saturation pressure is given by your Antoine equation, and then the unit of temperature for when you solve for it. Okay, um, but it's just you know again another problem which involves an application of uh, Rayleigh's law. All right, where I first drew a picture just so I could remind myself what's special about uh, my dew point and my double point. Yeah, dew point and bubble point for my mixture.